hello, welcome to, oh, okay, so I've officially decided to name this, I'm calling this nap time brand time, nap time brand time, so Mondays, 1.30 p.m. Pacific time, nap time brand time, um, so it's our series every Monday where I show up and I answer your questions about branding, about design, um, a little bit of marketing in there also, um, and so everything that I've been talking about in these videos um, is specifically stuff that's already been um, asked me by clients, been asked me by people messaging online, um, people that I just talk to in conversation. And so um, if you ever have specific questions, please let me know. Um, it's super helpful for me to have um, ideas for content and I would love to answer your questions. So um, don't hesitate. Um, so today we're continuing with the Instagram theme. Um, this turned out to be really successful last week. Um, I got a lot of response from that video, which was really awesome. And um, it really makes me see that um, I feel like I can talk about branding so much and it, but it ends up kind of seeming so like vague and real business owners, um, <laughs> Daniel, will she nap or will she brand? Find out. <laughs> well, a nap, nap time, brand time. It's where I decide, who knows? <laughs> I love that. Okay, so yeah, that's most of it is just me deciding whether or not to nap. Um, so anyway, um, I was gonna say, I feel like um, Instagram is a really tangible way to see your branding. And um, I feel like I can talk about branding until I'm blue in the face, but people don't, it seems a little more abstract than um, just, oh, hello, thanks for jumping on. Um, but branding, I feel like, seems a little more abstract of an idea than um, just Instagram followers. And so I feel like by talking about Instagram, it's actually a really nice way to talk about branding overall, but it feels a little bit more tangible. Um, and so we're going to continue with the Instagram theme today. Um, and uh, last week we talked about the biggest mistakes that you're making on your Instagram. Um, if you didn't get a chance to watch it, the replay is in my profile. Please check it out, and I'll um, link to it again today. Um, but... Um, that was more like big picture. And so that was looking more of your account as a whole. And so today we're actually going to break down your profile and talk about how you can like really utilize it to um, show your brand, to show your brand effectively. Um, and so we get a lot more detail today. Um, so I do have to say it usually takes less than one second for someone to decide whether or not to spend time on your profile. It takes them about one second. Um, and then it takes them less than five seconds to decide whether or not to follow you. Um, so more and more marketers are starting to call Instagram the new business card. Um, and um, I think it's really true. I just went to a networking event last, uh, I say last week, no, was it like two months ago, but I went to a networking event. And um, at the very end, it was like nobody had physical cards whatsoever. Literally everyone just walked around with their phone and was like, what's your Instagram? I'll follow you. Um, and so it's for sure, it's the new business card. And so your profile is so important. It's so important. It's your new business card. It's the thing that people are going to look at in order to be able to contact you, to be able to get a sense of what you do, who you are, who your brand is, um, and then also um, just learn more about you, more about your business. And so um, we're going to go through the few different types of accounts. I'm just going to do this briefly. I'm not going to spend a ton of time today. Um, some of this stuff um, you might already know, but I do definitely have some specific insights as far as branding goes. And, um, and then I've just been doing a lot of reading on this the past few months. And so um, I'm happy to pass along what I've learned. Um, I'm not an Instagram expert. I'm a branding expert. And so um, if you have questions about like the algorithm, I can definitely send you to some amazing sources and I'll give you some at the end. Um, but if you want questions, if you have questions as far as how to brand yourself, on Instagram, please ask away. I got you. Okay, so types of accounts. There's three different types of Instagram accounts that you can have. Um, and this is relatively new um, as of maybe like a year or two ago. And so um, if you're not sure, there used to just be personal and business accounts. And now there's also a third type of account called the creative account, the creator account. Um, there's not a ton of differences between creator and business, but I think basically Instagram saw um, the amount of people that were trying to blend personal and business, and that's basically what creator became. The creator accounts are a blend of uh, the business and the personal, and so letting you be able to do a little bit of both. Um, so the big differences are um, in analytics, um, like the insights, in the call to action buttons on the profile, and in the inbox. And so um, for analytics, Personal accounts do not provide any analytics. If you are a business, you absolutely need to have a business or a creator account. Um, I do not recommend doing business through a personal account because you can't see where your business is coming from. You can't see the hashtags that are working. You can't see your best posts. Um, and so you definitely, definitely need analytics. Um, for the creator accounts, the creator accounts get a lot more in-depth analytics. And so like I have um, two accounts, I have a personal 
like a public personal account and a um, public business account to look design. And um, I use the creator account on both just because I love analytics. I want to see everything. And so um, the creator accounts will show you a lot more like day to day analytics. And when the business accounts are showing more like weekly snapshots um, and like more big picture um, and the creator accounts will show you more detailed analytics. And then as far as the profile goes between um, business and creator accounts, both offer call to action buttons. Um, and so down below on um, your account, here I can kind of show mine, but um, I'll go through these more in a few minutes. But you can see like email. Um, so it's obviously my profile, so you can't quite see it exactly right. But these call to action buttons right here, there's different options between business and creator accounts. And so the creator accounts, um, you can hide more of these options. You don't have to use all of them. And so I think that's what Instagram kind of figured out. People being able to blend between the personal and their business accounts um, but uh, and then for business though business accounts so okay here I'll tell you my recommendations totally up to you it's really up to you what you feel like works better for you but I recommend to businesses that have a brick-and-mortar store to have a business account because it's a lot easier for tracking it shows your business address right there on your profile and it's not taken up by all of your characters um, and so you can show your actual physical address so if you're selling something physical or you have a physical store I usually recommend having a business account um, if you're selling something digital or if you're trying to blend kind of like a um, personal account and a business account then I I recommend the creator accounts. Um, and so if that helps as far as the call to action buttons go, they're um, a little bit more, you can play around with them a little bit more inside the creator accounts. The business accounts are a little bit more set, um, but the business accounts show the physical address, which is so important if you have a brick and mortar store. So um, things to think about. Um, and then the last thing is the inbox. And so the creator account, they ended up just giving you basically a way to divide up your inbox into two. There's a general and a, um, oh, I forgot what they call the two different sections, but there is a, uh, there we go, a primary and a general. And so you can decide between the two. And um, it's nice, basically, if you're using this for both your personal and your business, you can direct your personal messages to one account or to one folder and then your um, business stuff to another folder. Helpful. Um, so anyway, so those are the three big differences between business and creator accounts. And so it's up to you to decide what works better for you. I like the creator accounts personally, but I don't have a brick and mortar store. I don't need to show people an address. I'm a little bit more selective. Like I don't really need to give people my phone number because pretty much everything I've done is online. Um, and so um, those are kind of the biggest options, um, the biggest things to think about. So. I want to go through your profile um, and um, basically just giving a few different tips and tidbits about how to really utilize this to showcase your brand effectively. Um, I started on this a little bit last week um, and so basically I just want to go through and give more ideas and more nitty gritty info. Um, and so that's my goal with these videos is for, for these to be like really tangible for you to be able to leave with this with like direct ideas of kind of like, okay, actually I'm going to add that to my to-do list today. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this. So I hope that's true for you today. Um, okay, so bringing up Deluxe Design. So this is just my example today. Um, and don't mind my lovely cracked screen. I have a toddler and so I'm just assuming my screen's just gonna be cracked until forever. Um, so profile picture, we're gonna start with profile picture today. So let's see, get this light right. So there we go. Okay, so profile picture. Your profile picture should only be one of three things. <laughs> your profile picture should only be your logo, a very clear eye-catching picture of you or like your team or something that is like still very, very distinctive. Um, I wouldn't even say your team. I would say, um, Daniel, cause you're on there on here and you have a partner. I would say you and your partner makes perfect sense um, as far as like your business partner or if you're a team or um, anything. So if you have two people, sure, that's fine, but like not like 10 people. So a very clear picture of the people or person running the business or um, a picture of your most popular product. That's it. That's it, the picture of your most popular product. So your logo, a very clear logo, even better is just the icon. So like even if you don't even have the words, if you just have the logo without the words, that's also really effective um, and that looks really clean. Um, so your logo, a very clear eye-catching picture of you or the people running the business, the few tiny amount of people running the business or your most popular product. Not just any product, your most popular product. So if you are known just for your lip gloss and you have a picture of your lip gloss as your profile picture, that works. Um, I worked for a bakery for a very long time and we had one cake that was we were really kind of known for and so um, that's what we used as our profile picture was this one cake. Um, and so, but it has to be something that people know you for. They have to be able to see the picture and know that it's you, so important. Um, and so uh, usually the best profile pictures is just the icon. 
like the very simple version of your logo. Um, make sure it's a clear photo. People will only ever see this tiny. Like this is the biggest size really that they'll ever see it. Maybe bigger on an iPad or a desktop, but not really. Um, so make sure that it looks really good tiny. It has to. Um, and then uh, make sure that it's something that's like evergreen. Um, so evergreen means something that is good all year round. Um, it's not seasonal. It's not promotional. Um, so make sure that it's something that is not promotional or if it is promotional, that it's not out of date. <laughs> you do not want people to go to your profile and think that it's old because you have old stuff in your profile photo. So if you're going to do anything that's promotional, then um, make sure you change it as soon as that promotion is over. And that is something that's still really relevant to your brand. Um, one of the things that I've really started to like doing, and you, I actually did this on mine, is um, you can put a circle around your logo. It's a nice little design tip. Um, and it just really makes it stand out just a little bit extra when you have stories um, that it gives you like a double circle. If you ever see other people that have a double circle around their stories, it's not anything on Instagram. It's they made it into their profile picture. Um, and so um, it's just, it just looks really nice and it basically just catches your eye twice. Um, and so like, um, this is a influencer that I really like that I follow. She gives great Instagram tips. Um, if you want to follow her, Alex Beaton, um, but she did this. So you can see she has the circle around her picture. It's a really eye catching, clear picture of her. And then it has the story circle around it, which gives her the double circle when she posts her story. It looks really nice and clean. Um, okay. So profile picture, very clear, very pertinent to your brand. Next is your name. So your name, this is really important because your name in Instagram is searchable. So uh, if you want it to be purely searched by your name, you're looking for people that are, like, are just looking for you. Like if you're a big brand, then obviously you're just going to put like Glossier as your name because people are going to be searching specifically for your brand. But if you are a more unknown brand or a small business and you want people to be able to find you just by typing in their search bar on Instagram, that's where this comes in. So now anybody who is searching brand strategy or design, my profile will come up. Um, and so I still have at Deluxe Design up here, but, um, and I actually have it in my logo too. And so it's not like my business name is fully missing here. Um, but now my name is searchable and I didn't have to put this very important information. It's already bolded nicely at the top and I didn't have to mix it in with my 150 characters down here. Um, I still have plenty of space to write out my description. Um, so that was something I didn't mention last week is that, um, your name is searchable. And so, um, utilize that. Even if you want to put like your company name, it's, you don't have a ton of characters, um, but if you're able to fit it, you can put like your company name and something searchable also, and that helps. So your name, uh, next is your bio. Your bio is 150 characters. Okay. And I'm going to go through a few very specific things that you need to have in your bio. You need to have these things. Um, there are a few things that you do not need to have is things like I heart my dog on a business profile. Personal profile, go nuts, go nuts. Tell us everything, tell us, you know, your, your uh, favorite colors, your favorite animals, anything you want. But a business profile, you it, it's too much, you, don't, you can't waste that space. You need the space to tell people what you do. So I call these the three C's. You need three C's inside of your bio. So the first thing is a clear title. Okay, so that might be inside your name here. If it's not, then it needs to be down in here. It needs to be in your um, description, your bio, 150 characters. So a clear title, your client transformation. So that includes who you help and how you help them. So like mine right here, I say, we help mompreneurs attract their dream clients. Clear, mompreneurs, you know exactly who you are, attract their dream clients, and then with brand strategy and design, which I would continue on and say here, but I, that's, already said up here, I'm not going to say it twice. So, but that would be the full sentence is we help mompreneurs attract their dream clients with brand strategy and design. I help blank do blank either with blank. So like with branding and design or so they can blank. So we could also say, um, we help mompreneurs attract their dream clients so they can, uh, spend more time with their family and less time with on their business or so they can um, increase sales um, to provide for their families. Um, so I help blank, do blank, so they can blank. Client transformation, or I help blank, do blank, with blank. <laughs> 
if that's helpful. I'll write these out in the description down below. Um, but this is just your client transformation sentence in general. This should be like in your head, ingrained in your head anyway. So make sure it's up here. So people tell you, can see exactly. They can be like, oh wait, I'm a mompreneur. This is for me. Oh, hey, I'm a busy, creative entrepreneur. Hey, I'm a candle lover. You know, whatever it is, people can already see whether or not you are trying to attract them, that you're talking to them, and then what you'll do for them. So of your three C's, you have a clear title, your client transformation, and then the third thing that you need in your bio is a call to action. So my fun little call to action now is click for freebies. Before last month, it was sign up for our free challenge. You always want to have some sort of call to action to let people know how and why to click the link below. So let people know why should they click it. You know, if, if, it, if it's just sending them to your website, you can say, um, check out my recent work or um, see, see my cool new project or something that is like a little leading that gets people to kind of be like, okay. You know, or you could say, um, you know, three big tips for your Instagram and then link to your blog. Um, so it's something that is going to call attention to the link down below and um, hopefully encourage people to click it. So um, your bio, you need your three C's, clear title, client transformation, call to action. Um, if there is room, um, your location, if you're a local business, if you don't have a business profile with your address already in it, then you need to put that in your bio. You have to put what city you're in, <laughs> at least your city. Um, if anything else, if you are, have a brick and mortar store, you absolutely need to say um, where you are. And then um, a few extra tips, emojis, always catch your eye, words, you know, just a word paragraph um, will never catch your eyes much quite as um, emojis will, just being able to illustrate, you know, with a little visual. That's my little designer tip. Um, and then um, something that I see a lot that I feel like this kind of got a little confused is hashtags, hashtags in your bio. So um, this is really, really useful if you are, um, if you have your own hashtag that you want people to use. Um, like for a while I was starting to use, she's got the looks, um, which I might bring back, but it's, wasn't really pertinent in my bio, it's fine. Um, so she, you want to put your own hashtag in here, but these are not searchable. So if you are putting like hashtag dad life in your bio, um, that's not gonna come up when people are searching hashtag dad life. Um, and so these are not searchable, that's not where you use the uh, hashtags in your bio for. The hashtags in your bio are specifically for letting people know what hashtag to use for you and so if in order for you to find them or to um, like lead people to more information. So like I used um, the challenge that I did last month, I used the hashtag everywhere because that way if you clicked that hashtag, you would get all of the information about the challenge in one place. Okay, so bio. Um, next is the link. This link is everything. This link is gold. It's gold, people. So the link, this should always align with what you're talking about in your posts. So it should always be something that if someone sees your post, if it comes up because of a hashtag and then they go to the link in your bio, it should not take them to something that has nothing to do with the post that you're doing. So I really like to use um, any of those um, like link tree type of sites. So I have a link tree. So if you click mine, I just use link tree. This is totally free. This is super simple, but I had um, the sign up for my challenge was here also, but I referenced the blog a lot in my posts. And so I make sure to have an easy link to the blog. And then here's an easy link to my website. And when I'm having promos, so I'll be having a promo soon. And so I'll put the link to the promo here also so that if I'm ever talking about anything in my post, people can immediately click this link and find exactly what I'm talking about. Um, you don't want people to have to go to Google and search for you because they're not going to. Um, so there's a few of these. There's link in bio. Um, that one is really nice because you can link individual posts. Um, it's a little bit more work, but if you're like specifically posting out blog posts, link in bio is a really good one. Um, link tree, that's the one that I use. Um, super simple. This is free. Um, it doesn't have a ton of customizations on the free account, and so I'll probably eventually get to something more fancy. Um, but for now, link tree, super easy. And then um, the other one that's really fun that I like is milkshake. Um, and that one you can actually create like a little mini landing page. So it's like your own little mini website that links straight from your Instagram. Um, and so as a designer, that one intrigues me and I'm sure I'll get to it eventually. Um, but um, so yeah, you, those are just easy ways to um, utilize the link in your bio. Um, and then um, making sure to call attention to it. So shop now, shop, uh, you know, click for extra tips or whatever, but always making sure to have some sort of call to action in your bio. Um, okay, cool. So the last thing that I want to talk about real quick is um, highlights. 
So highlights, um, again, I uh, had the uh, every great intention of putting in some highlights just for this um, video today, but uh, I have too much work coming in, which is a really great problem to have, and um, just didn't have time, so here we are. Um, so brand your highlight covers. So that is as far as I got, as I created some cute little highlight covers for it. Um, if you need branded highlight covers, reach out, I got you. Um, Brand your highlight covers because this is going to contribute to the overall look of your page and it's going to really contribute to the overall brand look. Um, and then I like to think of these, I've heard of these um, saying, think of these as like a movie trailer for your business. Um, so the highlights should basically play like a movie trailer. Or I just kind of like to think of it as like, like if you have five highlights, you can even have three. Three highlights, what are the three things, the three topics that you want people to associate you with? Um, so like these are really good like the first one that i'm going to put in is testimonials so i've um, gotten some really great testimonials that i posted to my stories but i haven't featured those anywhere on my page um and so putting in one for testimonials you can put ones about your products so maybe you feature a different product every week um it may be, um you have one just about your business in general and it's you and you could say like about me and um, now this is the time instead of putting all the stuff about your dog in your feed you can put all the stuff about your dog here in your highlights and so people can just kind of go through and get to know you but you can still use your feed for all the juicy value and the stuff that's actually going to sell. Um, so the highlights are really nice to be able to basically be a little like get to know me um, and get to know the business. So thinking of them that way. So as you post things and as you post to your stories, think about what are the, you know, even if you just start with five, what are the top five things that I want people to know about my business? I need to be posting this stuff in my stories regularly. Um, and so, um, again, do as I say, not as I do, these will be added to, uh, my account, you know, at some point when there's more hours in the day, um, but uh, until then, please utilize them. And um, if you have any questions, then feel free to ask. Um, okay, so that's your profile. That was your profile. This ended up being a, um, a lot uh, longer than I thought this was gonna be, but I hope it was super helpful. Um, I thought I would get into planning content another time, so if that's something that you'd be really interested in, then I would love to talk about that, ways to, um, easy ways to plan your content, ways to reuse your content. Um, and so um, if that's something you wanna know, then please holla at me, let me know. Um, and I do, I wanna give you, um, oh, <laughs> Oh man, I did want to go through a few more resources. Okay, so real quick, I'm just going to go through um, a few places where I've learned about social media and um, just to pass them on to you. It's the same thing. I'm not an Instagram expert. I'm a branding expert. So this is how I've learned about Instagram. Um, Instagram scheduling apps. Their blogs are incredible. So, um, and also if you follow them on Instagram, they're pretty good too. So Later is a really good scheduling app. Um, Preview is a really good scheduling app and Buffer. All of these are really good scheduling apps for Instagram. You can schedule your posts through them. Um, I use uh, Preview, um, but I've been looking into later recently. Um, but um, their blogs are incredible. They're incredible. Like they, that's their whole thing is they, they are Instagram experts. They're the ultimate Instagram experts. So um, that was Preview, Later, and Buffer um, are really super helpful blogs. So if you're ever really searching for anything about Instagram, um, and also if you sign up for their newsletters, I get their newsletters now and it's like just great Instagram tips straight to your inbox. And you can just every once in a while kind of be like, oh, good to know. Um, so that's really helpful. Um, Instagram has a blog also just called the Instagram Business Blog. And that was really helpful. Um, uh, Boss Babe, if you are a member of Boss Babe or if you follow them at all, they have a really great free Instagram training um, that's taught me a lot about content. And so um, I'll definitely be sharing some of that. Um, and then podcasts. I really like podcasts. Oh, good to know. There we go. Podcast. Daniel Buffer has a really good podcast too. Good to know. Pod Buffer podcast. Genius. Um, I also really like, um, you know, so I uh, have my feminine uh, brand, but um, Gold Digger with Jenna Kutcher is really awesome. Um, and then I really like the Influencer podcast with Julie Solomon. Um, and so, yeah, just really other good places to learn about Instagram. Um, and so um, check it out. Let me know. Um, and so anyway, uh, I'll leave you with that today. I hope this was super helpful. It was a ton of information. Again, I ended up talking way longer than I thought I was going to, but I hope that this was helpful and that you got some good tips. Um, and I just wanted to end by asking you, uh, what else do you want to know? <laughs> Tell me, message me, contact me, comment below, DM me. Um, what else do you want to know? I'm planning my content for February and March, um, and I have got some great questions. I have a few things lined up, but I would love to get some specific questions, especially from you guys who actually show up for my videos, which I'm so appreciative of. Um, and so um, let me know what you want me to talk about, and I would love to answer any questions. Um, and uh, yeah, anything about building a brand, marketing your business, or design. 
So um, thanks so much. I hope you have a wonderful Monday. Um, and I will see you next Monday at 1.30 for more branding insight. Um, and uh, I can't wait. Have a great week. Thanks, y'all. Bye.